Watch this. <laughs> She's gonna eat <laughs> We have a walk from Gaither Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, this is the session called um, Cybersecurity Gamification. So they are, that's part of the reason you have these props and there's audience participation because it's teaching cybersecurity concepts by using games. So Dr. L uh, Lorraine Jonathan is an assistant professor at Georgia Gwinnett College where she teaches information technology, e-commerce, and ethics in IT. Prior to entering academia, Dr. Jonathan was a lead process engineer in the telecommunications industry. In this position, she was team leader responsible for tracking unresolved engineering issues, identifying process improvements, developed code, and wrote the ISO documentation associated with the process. Today, she, know, she uses this knowledge, along with the knowledge gained while working on her, on her doctorate, to teach and mentor students at Gw Georgia Gwinnett College. Her specialty is teaching basic computer skills, e-commerce platforms, and the importance of understanding ethics and professionalism in IT. As an advocate for cybersecurity, she introduces security and privacy concepts in all of her courses. Dr. Jonathan has published articles on the pedagogy of blockchain and adaptive learning through grat gratification. Dr. Jonathan is a member of the Association of Internet Technology Professionals, Women in Technology, the Internet Security Association, and the Social Media Committee at GGC. Dr. Karen Benson is an assistant professor at Georgia Gwinnett College, where she teaches information technology and cybersecurity. Before coming to the college, Dr. Benson was an IT network design specialist in the Atlanta area for over 40 years. She now uses this knowledge acquired in the field to teach and mentor other students under her tutelage at Georgia Gwinnett College, as well as adjunct positions at Gwinnett Technical College and Liberty University. As an advocate for cybersecurity training at all levels of industry, Dr. Benson has published articles on the pedagogy of blockchain, teaching cybersecurity to college students, and hosted a Tech Talk event for college students. Furthermore, she speaks at conferences on methods to infuse gamification into cybersecurity courses. Dr. Benson is a member of the Association of Internet Technology Professionals, Women in Technology, the Internet Security Association, and is a second lieutenant in the Georgia State Defense Force. She holds CompTIA certifications of A+, Network+, and Security+, as well as the Microsoft MCSE certification. Please welcome Dr. Benson and jo Dr. Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and we are so excited to be here today. We've been to several of the uh, Montreat conferences, and it's very exciting to be able to be with you and share with you what we believe in, and that is gamification. So today, since we're here in a cybersecurity conference, we wanted to go over teaching cryptography through gamification. And I'm not sure where my clicker, it's clicker. How do we click through? <laughs> it's encrypted. <laughs> On the podium. Thank you. That would be... Oh, okay, here we go. Thank you. So we don't want to get into the weeds right now with all of this, who, where, what, when, why. We really want to show you what has worked for us in our education field, in teaching students. But we're going to tell you the definition of gamification is using game-based mechanics, aesthetics, game thinking to engage students to promote, motivate, and learn. Especially with this generation, what we call the millennials, the X generation and so forth, they are not from my generation in which I sat through a two hour lecture, right? They don't do that anymore. So we are bringing in gamification. Why am I teaching using gamification? Well, if you look at what we called Bloom's taxonomy, I won't get into all of the details, but it is true. Students need to know how to remember something. We are going to have to do some lecture before they can understand what we're talking about. But through gamification, that accentuates the understanding so that they can apply what they have learned in the outside world. They can analyze, evaluate, and then take that information and create and involve this into the environment and especially the careers that they are going into. So the reasons to employ gamification in the classroom. 
I think we've all seen this picture before with student engagement, right? Does that Asleep. look like anybody? Does that look like any of your students, especially after lunch, right? All right, peer motivation we have found to be a very strong factor with gamification. They're working in a team. That helps them when they get into the real world, knowing how to work with a team, especially with people. Maybe I tell them all the time, 40 years in the industry, I never got to choose my team. Okay, and then we talk about social interaction, and the students love to call this crowdsourcing. You may know something that I don't know, but I know something you don't know, and you put it together, and so it becomes a learning process. So the goal is the, uh, to break down the complex concepts into simple theories upon which to build. Now this may not work, and some of our toys here may not work at MIT, because honestly they're taking entrance exams and they have to start out at this level. But at the, our college level where we are at, sometimes they need the basic level to build upon. Once they get that concept, they can grow from there. You're shaking your head. You find that true here too? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they think they're up here and they're really not. You know, you're missing a few steps down here at the bottom. Okay, so why cryptography? And truly gamification can be used in any part of education. But since we are now at Montreat at this great cybersecurity conference, I wanted to talk about crypt cryptography because I do believe it is the lowest common denominator in cybersecurity. When we teach uh, computers, we talk about bits and bytes. I have my bits right here that I bring to school, and this shows bytes. And I sh we play games in which they have a letter of the alphabet, and then they have to come up and choose which lights would be turned on, zeros and ones. So it's very important because in today's education, we need to teach the students about cybersecurity threats. We're going to have, play a game with your toys that you got handed out on, a denial of service. We're going to talk uh, some about ransomware. Most of them know about ransomware. They've had a relative or some place where they worked which had a uh, problem with ransomware. They know about identity theft, uh, online monetary theft, Again, they know these things, but they're very naive. It won't happen to me. It happened to my dad, and he doesn't know anything about computers, so yeah, it should happen to him. But they, la they love this guy here. What's his name? What? <laughs> anonymous? <laughs> yes, Anonymous. They call him Anonymous, and they love this guy. So when I show this picture, they're like, oh, yeah, that's a dangerous guy. We know what you're talking about now. So I want to show this picture of the threat cloud. I'm hoping that we can, can you click on that link? Yeah, there we go. This is very important to show the students and they get it. Oh, wow. And we'll sit here for a few minutes and we'll say, well, who's under it? Well, what's the United States? Okay, they're uh, now hitting India, Switzerland, China. Yeah, China, hit the Chinese. Uh, Russia. And so this gives them a visual of what the problems are out there. You think that there is no cyber warfare, but truly there is, right? And this generation needs to know about it, but more than that, as we talked about in our other uh, discussions, we need to know that we need them on the battlefront for this cyber warfare. We need them to understand and be that person who does not let that phishing attempt come through. So when they see things like this, I think it, may, it brings it home and they understand it a little bit better. Okay, so let me see if I can click past. Uh, one thing that we do is we talk a little bit about the history of cryptography. Oh, they all hate history, oh, it's too boring. But I tell them, you are not the first to need to get plans from the front of your forward line of troops across the battlefield to another for you plot line. you pass this around? Yeah, you can go ahead and pass those around. So uh, I actually found this at a Thomas Jefferson gift shop in Boston, and this was actually his type of cryptography, okay, using what I call the rolling pin. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. And we also have the Caesar cipher, okay. I think some of you may have gotten that uh, decoding ring in the cereal box. If you're my age, we used to have all that. Those are worth a lot of money if you find one. 
give me a call. So we tell them that cryptography and the need to encrypt is not anything new, okay? This started thousands of years ago. And we play a lot of games using the Caesar cipher. We've made uh, several of those, and we give those to the students. And then we also pass around the rolling pin, and we make our own cryptography, cryptographic messages to send around the room. So they get the idea of cryptography and the history of it. So I tell my students cryptography is three words, hash, symmetric key, asymmetric key. You might say, well, but, 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 there's more to it than that. And there is. But again, we're breaking things down to its bare bones level. So we start off by talking about hash. And, you want to help me with the hash algorithm here? Uh, I'm, I'm one of those weird people who goes to Kroger and says, ah, perfect to describe hash, a hash algorithm. So I go over, again, Bloom's Taxonomy, I talk about what is hash. It's a digital fingerprint. You've got a fingerprint, it's identical, it's only for you. We can identify you through your fingerprint. It represents contents. Uh, it's intended to be a one-way comparison. The digest cannot be reversed. The two inputs will not produce the same uh, two different inputs will not produce the same hash, and hashing will verify that the digital input has not changed. So that doesn't mean a whole lot to the students. But let's take a look here. Dr. Jonas and I, and I, after I break it, will break the hash. It's been de decrypted. I'm trying to get the key out. <laughs> so we look at the hash this way, and we say that this is our algorithm here. And then this is our key. The key can be changed, just like we change the Caesar cipher. So what we do is we put the key into our algorithm, and then we simply put in several uh, inputs, and our inputs are going to be the same. Okay. Need the key first. Yep, yep, put the key in first. And there's some more for the key. And then we simply take our algorithm and we close it. <laughs> and I see, then we compare the hash. And I say, see, it's a digital fingerprint. It represents the contents. It's a one-way comparison. I can't recreate the Cheerios and the Raisin Bran. It cannot be reversed. Uh, two different inputs will not produce the same Hash. So let's I'm, see what happens when we add Fruit Loops. So I'm going to hack it. So this is all compliments of Hampton Inn and Black Mountain. <laughs> you can thank them. Ah, so now the contents are not the same. So I said, do you really want to download that particular driver or the firmware? Or maybe it's the firmware for the engine in the Delta Jet that's going to take you home. No, okay? So they understand with this type of gamification. So go back to the digital signature. If you put a digital signature in, if they don't match, right. do you want to trust it? Right. Do we trust it if the signatures? No, so we don't care that it was Fruit Loops in there. It just doesn't look the same. Okay? Right. Everybody got this piece of gamification? The students really like it, they, and they, they always say, we'll understand hash forever, and now when we see our mom's onion chopper, we'll really be able to explain it to her as well. <laughs> so then we talk about the second word, a symmetric key. I tell them a symmetric key is like a private key. You have to keep the keys separate, and you've got to keep it secret between the sender and the receiver. If the re you have a lot of receivers, it's kind of hard to have to pass that key around, correct? It's also susceptible to a man-in-the-middle attack, and it's difficult, again, to keep the get the key to multiple people. So we have a particular game that we call the grid game, and they really enjoy this game because it portrays two things. 
It portrays a key, and it also talks about correct, concise coding. So on this particular sheet, we get into teams of two, and we have opposing teams. So there's four people in this team. And so the students will, right here, color any type of design using the color pencils. They enjoy that. We make a Christmas tree, make a uh, jack-o'-lantern, whatever. But the problem is they have to write down how to get that particular drawing. So we tell them, make it kind of simple, because you've got to say, start at row one, column one, red, and so forth. They enjoy that. They write up there. One's drawing, one's writing it down. And then I say, time's up. Swap with your opposing team. But you will give your opposing team your instructions. You will keep the answer sheet. And they have to take the instructions and make your diagram, your drawing, without looking at your drawing. Ooh. So ask them, how many of you think they are able to match that drawing? How many think that the drawings Why? match? No, they do not. Why? And they're in bedlam ensues because it's like, that was the worst coding. I could not read her handwriting. Well, I did. I tried, but you know, and so it's a lot of finger pointing going on and I tell them. So now we have a problem with coding. It's best to have clear, concise coding. You may have to hand it to somebody else to do, to run the program later. And then I said, second of all, you see that we had the same key. We passed the same key. And that's an example of a symmetric key using just one key. And then we have the game of the asymmetric key. And we're going to play this a little bit later, this game if we have enough time. But I tell them that an asymmetric key now is going to use two different keys. You will have your private key, and then there's, there will be a public key out there. And I tell them it's so similar to your parents' safety deposit box. A lot of them don't even know what that is. But I said, if you go to the bank and you put something uh, like your, uh, all your money in a box, in a safety deposit box, then the bankers can get their key. It will fit any of those boxes. But it takes two keys to open the box. Okay, the public key would be the banker's key and the private key is your key. What happens if you lose your key? Are you going to be able to get into the safety deposit box? No. All right, and I give them examples of when I was in industry, that private key was lost, and pretty much you, your laptop was just a boat anchor, right? Because it was all encrypted. Another game that we play that's very important is we talk a lot about algorithms and what an algorithm is. I think you all may have seen this before. You want me to hold it? It is the Cracker Barrel. Bought this from Cracker Barrel. And uh, I explained the game to them about how you jump like checkers and you have to end up with just one peg. You want me to pass four out? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can pass that around. So I, ha I give them all in a team to try it. And uh, they try, and they can't get it done. And then I give them the instructions on how to do it. Of course, then they can all follow the instructions and solve the puzzle. And I said, this is an example of an algorithm. You need the algorithm in order to solve the puzzle. So these are different games that teach. Don't use the directions yet. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't lose the directions. I always have to tell them. So these are games that give the, um, and teach them about hash, asymmetric, symmetric, and algorithms, and especially about the history of cryptography. One of the games that we play is applying cryptographic games, and they really love this game because most I bring in a lot of items that they have never seen before unless it's been at great grandma's house. Not even grandma's house, but great grandma's house. And we play a game of red light, blue light, take a step forward. If you've ever seen this or if you've ever used it, I pull out a blank check. Most of them have never written a check before. And I also bring in this telephone. My daughter and I were at a garage sale and she said, what is that? 
I said, she was 12 at the time. I said, it's a, it's a telephone. She said, how do you use it? She had no clue about how to dial and that you were to use this. Hello? So, a novelty item for my classes. They all want to come up and try and dial home or whatever. And they don't even know their phone numbers of their parents. So, because normally they have to hit the button. So, all of these things are an application of cryptography. One thing that I do show them that is here, this building here, I talk about the cloud. And they're, they all have heard about the cloud. Oh, it's in the cloud, it's in Dropbox. I got my pictures in the iCloud, the Apple Cloud, whatever. And I tell them, this is a picture here of the cloud. And I talk about how I was instrumental in building this. It was a, it's a Google data center there at Six Flags in Atlanta. And uh, how, what all that we did to build it, the number of servers there, why they picked that area because of the water to cool and so forth. So these are things that bring to cryptography home, especially the cloud, because I said, you have to encrypt things going to the cloud. And while they're in the cloud, at rest, they need to be encrypted. Okay, so another, we see here the application of the cryptography games, the algorithm that we have here. Here's two students trying to solve the um, uh, pin game, the golf pin game. And another step that we take that I've not brought out because it, it is a lot of uh, equipment is that I have old pieces of networks that I bring in. As you can see here, I have a firewall, an internet service provider modem, and I also have a switch. And I bring in cables and I show them the linear progression of packets. Let's see, do we have my packets here today? Let's see. The linear progression of packets and how data is taken apart and put into packets. And it goes through the different uh, pieces of equipment, your internet service provider modem, then to a firewall, and to a switch. And you see the guy right here with the postman hat on and the postal bag. We play postman. He goes around picking up packets and then going to the different teams with their network set up. And they enjoy that. They understand how it resembles very much a, the postman that we use. But we, remember, they get mad at me when I stop them and right. say, let me examine your packet, and I switch them. Right, so we play man in the middle. So we stop the postman, they we switch the packets away. around, we'll put some in our pocket, and they know now the definition and how a man in the middle can attack and uh, take your data. Okay, and finally we talk a lot about blockchain. Is anybody in here familiar with blockchain? I'm sure who has not heard blockchain? Never heard it before? Okay, blockchain, as I've done my research and we've written papers on, is probably the next big internet element. It is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mechanism to store and privatize your data. So we don't get into, again, the weeds of all of this with our students, but we feel very positive that they are going to get into their career and hear the word blockchain. Even in nursing, this prescription needs to go into the blockchain. Their data needs to come out of the blockchain, be able to read their blockchain. And so what we do is we play a game using our minor hats here, yes, and blocks. And we do a lot of role play and we say, what type of things would you want to put into a block? And we talk about voting. Maybe your vote needs to go into a block. And we talk about that Walmart has their own set of blocks like this. And we discuss also about miners and how miners make money. And they wear the hats and they become a miner, as you can see here in the picture. And they are collecting money. And we do a lot, of, we tell them they have to solve a math problem. If you're minor, a minor, you need to have, be pretty strong in math. And they have to solve some math problems and they have a relay race to solve the math problem and to get the Bitcoin. So these are all ways that they will all know and understand the basics of cryptography 
once they get into their careers in the real world. Here's another example here. We um, did a presentation at a biomedical convention on putting information into the blockchain, and we showed how uh, your uh, diabetic pump could actually be hacked as well, and how important all of this was. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to, bless you, we want to uh, play a quick game of the distributed denial of service. Can Everybody in you here? ask them who knows what it is? Who knows what the DDoS is? If you don't teach it, can you explain it? Well, <laughs> that's what our students would like. <laughs> How can you explain it to somebody? How would you explain a denial of service? Okay. Pretty good. And the way I explain it is that I get a lot of robocalls, insurance, uh, IRS, Social Security. And yes, you don't answer them, but you still have to look at your phone, right? And if you get so many of these, you're distracted and you can't do your job. In the same way with a server. If they get so many hits, like, and we call them sync and acknowledge, if you get so many of those, the server slows down and it can't do its job and eventually it just dies. And we talk about these as bots and the bots get on the server, can hit the server uh, simply by you clicking on a phishing attempt. And now you've got a bot on your machine and you will not even know that you have it. So this is an example here of us playing the game in the class. This is one of our most popular games, that in blockchain. And they, they play it so much, they're like, man, we got 10 more minutes before the bell rings. Can we play it again? So I want to show you, and I show this to the uh, students, if we could click on the, um, there we go. And this, again, shows the students the enormity of the problem. And they love to see, oh, it's coming in from where right now? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, why don't we send any, any back? And eventually it will, as in this situation right here, we are really hammered and there's a, they seem to be targeting Redmond a lot and also the center of the United States. St. Louis, what's going on in St. Louis? <laughs> the baseball game. <laughs> well, I know that we put in a Google data center in Pryor, Oklahoma. So that's also a target. All of their data centers are a target. Redmond, right. Yeah, the Gordon, Fort Gordon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. You can do that through the data that's coming through. Right. Okay, and here's a huge one. Oh, they are just all over this. Wow, and I said, this is another example why we need you to study cybersecurity. We need you on the forward line of troops to help us out with this, these attacks. Okay. Okay. Karen, well, I moved over here so be, I don't see that. Okay. I am going to try to stand here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to try. Uh, there's a huge one coming in right there. Oh. Here comes another <laughs> one. Yes, that one is from China. Okay, so you can stop this one now and we'll switch the, switch the slide. It is pretty, uh, pretty impressive, yeah. And they're all like, what time is it in China? Is it night or day or why are they, they, they work 24 seven over there. So. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend like you all are a bot. I'm going to let uh, Dr. Jonathan explain the game. Hi, to show you just kind of a first-hand, simple way of doing this, this is going to pop up. Can you do the first one? Okay, so you each have something in your hand. Each one of you are a bot. 
okay? Different type of bots. When, this, when you send a message to me, I have to send it back to you, right? Synchronize and acknowledge, yes. Right? Have to. So we're going to see how good I can answer you, okay? When you see your bot, you shake it, rattle it, squeeze it, whatever, until I answer you back. These are going to, I will tell you, they will get faster. So you can see how well I do or not. Okay? Are you ready? Ready. Go. Wait a minute, they're doing different ones. <laughs> Cat toys. Uh. <laughs> Airplane whistle. We got an airplane whistle. <laughs> oh, dog toy, dog toy. <laughs> cat toys. Everybody shake the cat. Tootsie rolls. <laughs> Birthday whistle. <It's> coming. <laughs> All right. Dog. Dog toy. I'm not doing too good. Cat whistle. <laughs> Clapper. Tootsie roll. Dog toys. <laughs> what is that? He's really enjoying that. All of a sudden, the boss attacks. And what happens? <laughs> The server can't keep I'm up. I'm dead. The server crashes. All right, so that's exactly what's happened when you see all those lights you coming at you. Want to let one of them come up and try? What? You want to let one of them come up and try? Okay, so now we're going to let, we're going to have a volunteer to come up and try, and you can ring the bell. Can you bring the bell? The only problem is, is I got to wash this off because I was bowing on it. <laughs> okay. I've got a, I think I have an extra There's one. There's a reason. Nope, I don't. Does anybody have one of these? Well, what happened to the extras? I guess we didn't bring them all, did we? Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were new, yeah, but I put them all out. Okay. You want to rinse that one off? If you get the whistle, can you whistle? Yeah, if you get the whistle, there they are. There's some in there. There you Thank go. You. There you go. We knew they were here somewhere. All right. All right, are we ready? Here goes a minor cap. All right. When your bot appears, shake, rattle, roll, what, blow, whatever, until the server responds. Ready, go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just shake yeah, it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep no, going. No, keep going. Keep, keep going. going. Got a blow. Server mishap, but the server's going. Clapper. <laughs> blow the whistle. Got a whistle. Dog toys. That's easy. Uh, what's next? Cat toys. <laughs> Oh, and Tootsie Rolls, whistle, <laughs> birthday whistle, birthday, oh, now you got the plane whistle, you're falling behind, dog whistle, dog whistle, oh, cat toys, clappers, <laughs> Tootsie Rolls, uh, airplane, Dog whistle. Clapper. <laughs> you don't have one. <laughs> Server meltdown. And I tell the students, this is the latest type of DDoS. They send that server something it doesn't understand, it doesn't have a reply for, and it just shuts down. So, thank you. Thank you all for playing our game today. If we could have, we have a few more minutes. If we could have 
Two, three volunteers, we can show the private key, public key game. You got the, I got it. You got the key, okay. All right, three volunteers. Three suits, one, who else? It's not that hard. No, you don't have to do math, I promise you. The people who wear these hats have to do the math. Okay, come on up. All right, two is good, or three, come on up, please, yes. Yes, and come on up. Got four. Stand here. You win a prize. Y'all stand up here in front of the table. Yes. Tin hut. Forward. Yeah. Y'all come on up here. We're good. All right. So, my quest is that I have to get to Dr. Jonathan. These bitcoins. I got a bunch of bitcoins in here. Of course, we talk about virtual bitcoins. They're not really anything you can touch, but they like the idea that there's bitcoins in here. And I've locked this. So I have to get this to Dr. Jonathan. I've locked it with my key. So let's pass it down and see if you can get into the box. Is can there you any get way in it? Can you get in? You're supposed to try to get try in. Try to get in. <laughs> they gave up. Oh, they. I misunderstood. Uh, <laughs> then the bitcoins will break. No. I guess you got to pass it on down to. So, but can I get in? Can you get in? Why not? Because I got. So what do I do? What do we, what is she gonna do? She's got a key, a lock and a key. Yeah. All right, so she's going to pass it back down. Can, Can you, you get, get in? in? It's got two locks on it now. Ah. Break the lock? Can't break the lock. Can't ah. break the lock. No. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my key and pull my lock off. It's still locked, All right? Can't get those bitcoins. We'll pass it back down. Can you get in? No. <laughs> no. Can I get in now? Yay! Supposedly I can. And everybody wins a Bitcoin. Thank you. Help yourself to a Bitcoin. Help yourself to Bitcoins. <laughs> Just don't try and sell them on the market. Are they white coins? They're, um, they're chocolate. They're, they're chocolate. Who? Chocolate. <laughs> no, I don't, but I know what you're, who he, what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. No. Top secret. Yeah. Oh, right. And that's where we got our GPS system, right? right. Somebody stole it from the. And Dr. Jonathan also wrote on Doc, or, uh, Grace Hopper yeah. in her dissertation, who was also very uh, instrumental with a lot of cryptography and. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the very first cryptography that we've ever heard of was about 4,000 years ago with Darius the king. He needed to get in, some uh, instructions to his troops. So he took his slave and he shaved his head and tattooed the instructions on the slave's head. The hair grew back. He just walked across the battlefield said, shave my head, you'll know what to do, and they did. So that is really the first recorded piece of, en of encryption. Mm -hmm. It'll work. <laughs> right. Any other questions? We'd like to hear from you as to games that you play in your classroom to impart this type of knowledge to your students. And again, we play a lot of different games, not just on cryptography, 
We do a lot of gamification with uh, policies and procedures and social media. One of their favorite games is I pull out, I type up a strip of paper of something wild that maybe somebody did, like dressed up like Elvis and uh, rode my motorcycle into a bar. And I type it up and I put it on their backs, just different things that they, that could have happened that they might have posted on social media and forgot about, right? Because they do forget everything they put on social media. And then they have two minutes to walk around. They, don't, don't, they do not know what is on, the back, on their back, posted on their back, to find somebody to go into business with. And they look at somebody's back and go, oh, nope, not going in with them. And so they have to figure out from social media things that happened in the past and who do they want to partner with. But one of the favorite things is I put on somebody's back, stole money from the collection plate. That guy's got leprosy. They don't want anything to do with that person because he stole from the collection plate. So uh, these are but all and things. And we use it for other things too. Yeah, we use one it for. One of the other favorite ones is, is anybody here old enough to remember the dating game? Do, 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 you know what that is? Somebody sits on this side of a podium, they ask three questions to yes. the bachelor, bachelorette, and she picks the winner. Well, we changed it to the hiring game. Who, who wants to get hired today? We do mock today? interviews. <laughs> And we do mock interviews of questions we have asked people that we've interviewed and people have asked us in an interview. And they're stumped and they're writing questions down as we call them out because they know those are practice questions for when they go into their interview. So we make things fun. The policies and procedures are extremely important these days, but they are not interested in reading those chapters, so we play games with them. And they have to come up with games to teach that particular policy and procedure. Yes. That's the most games it and it tests the time to their final process. One of can you disappear? And then I have one can you can you disappear off the internet? Can you disappear completely? And do you have to show me and it'll take about ten weeks for them to go through that and everything. And I have one group that actually lists this they took and the class after the question. Right. Right. Under the grid. Yep. We talk a lot about that. What other comments and questions do you all have? You can see we have a lot of fun in classes. What we games what did we, we do. do that you liked? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Pass the key with it. That's a very good. The yes. Yes, so we had the symmetric key. That's a, we will change our game. <laughs> Thank you. Any other? The DDoS. <laughs> These come to me about 2 in the morning. And I call her. I think I got a game. No, at 4 o'clock every morning I get a phone call. Are you up yet? <laughs> we got a game. Got an idea. <laughs> but we, we want to share these with you all. And we would like to have some type of an open forum maybe next year on games that you've come up with. We'll be sending you, or I'm not going to tell you about what, what all we can do, but we would like to know if you all have ideas of things that are working in your classroom, for instance, anonymity, and how you teach those particular really tough concepts. Okay? Any other questions or comments? No? Well, thank you. I've, I've really loved this conference. It's one of my favorites, and uh, meet a lot of great people. It's like a reunion to see everyone again. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, can I get, get our picture? We've got to turn in a picture to our boss. That